we've only started, like we're quite early in the course still. So the stuff that you've seen on the reference sheet, you mostly haven't been using very much because you don't know most of it. Let's just have a quick browse through. And I want you to, I wonder if you remember how many of you uh, looked at the reference sheet. It's three pages, right? Two of the pages are two unit, two pages for two unit, and the third page is three unit, extension one, right? That's convenient. Now, let's just have a look through and see how much of this at this point now we recognize, okay? I am gonna bring this down. Okay, there we go. At the gate, you can see, there's the stuff I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit, so it's not the top. At the gate, you can see algebra stuff, like first topic of the year. Angle sum of polygon is in there as well. Equation of a circle, we haven't dealt with this this year, but you actually learned those at the end of year 10. Okay, so this is the coordinate geometry form for it. Then you see a whole bunch of trig over here. Um, I pointed this out before, that you've got these identities here. You've got the handy little Pythagorean identity there. There are lots of versions of the Pythagorean identity. Why do they only include this one? Because you can get all the other ones from here, right? If you remember or if you refer to this, this is your guide and we don't need to include the rest of them. For example, if you wanted the one that had tan squared in it, what would you do to this? Yeah, Nadine. Divide it by cos. Yeah, you divide through by, actually dividing through by cos is not quite enough. Um, I need to divide by cos squared and everything is squared. Right? So that would turn into tan squared plus one equals cot, cot squared. Cot squared. I, wait, so cos. We divide by cos, so that'd be sec squared. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, what about this stuff? What's this for? This is so that if you see sine 60 degrees, you should immediately think root 3 on 2, right? Like that should just be instinctive to you. Um, these used to be the first things that I would draw on my paper when I would start them in my exams, okay? Uh, this stuff, again, things that you encountered last year when you were doing trig and you were measuring with triangles. And then we come back up to here. Now, have a look. We're in coordinate geometry land at the moment. What of this do you recognize? Do you recognize all of it? Do you know all of this? Yeah. How about this guy? You dealt much with him before? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to encounter this a little bit later on, okay? Because there's distance between two points. When you've got two points, Unambiguously, if you say the distance between them, it's like, well, okay, the interval that joins them, that's the distance. But if you say a point and a line, it's not so clear. Here's a point, here's a line. If I say the distance, right, do I mean like walking along this way or that way? In order to make sure that we can communicate this in a way that's consistent, we say the perpendicular distance, which is also the shortest distance, okay? We'll come to this later on improving where this weird awkward result comes from. Distance, there's gradient, there's a uh, line form which we're gonna have a look at later this lesson, actually. There's a notable absence from there, like there's a line right there. You learned three formulas, you learned them really well to do with uh, two points in quantum geometry. What's the missing one? You've got distance, you've got gradient. Think back to yesterday. There's no midpoint formula. No midpoint formula? There is a midpoint formula. Remember, I said, or well, we said, uh, if we go to this trick stuff here, we include this result. We don't include any of the other um, ones that come out of this because you can get to them from here, okay? The midpoint formula is on the sheet. It's just that it's hiding on this extension one page. Again, let's have a look down and see if we can recognize stuff. We've done all this, right? This is ringing bells, yes? So there's just your regular expansions. There's your T results right there, that's convenient. We haven't quite got to this yet, there'll be a time. But then I want you to have a look at this. Okay, now there's a couple of things to point out. Firstly, I already said to you, there's a midpoint formula on the sheet. There it is. Do you recognize it? Um, the midpoint of an interval is you take an interval and you divide it into a given ratio. What ratio does the midpoint divide into? One, one to one. They're the same, aren't they? And you used congruent triangles yesterday to work with that, right? Well, if the ratio is one to one, look at all the m's and n's, right? What happens if you change all of those into ones? It becomes a normal. You get, you get x1 plus x2 on 
2. And then you get y1 plus y2 on, that's the midpoint formula. So it is there, just like sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, you can get to it from there if you like. Okay. Now I actually want you to turn to your book where you did your work yesterday. You wrote down a formula for uh, internal division of an interval, but it wasn't this one. The one that Mr. Dennis gave you was one which uh, is very commonly used. I learned it when I was in year 10 and 11. And uh, the textbook also uses it. It uses different letters and it uses a different order. Can you look and see the difference? I'm pretty sure if my memory serves. Yes, the form that you wrote it in. I think the form you wrote it in was like this. Does that look similar? Yes. And then of course the Y's are you know, the same thing but Y's. Okay? So have a look. This is tricky because unlike, say, I won't scroll back, you guys know it well enough. Unlike the distance formula and the gradient formula and the midpoint formula, it doesn't matter really where you put your X1's and your X2's. But here it matters a lot. You get a whole different point if you swap these things around. right? So I want you to notice, okay, the way that this has been written is to make the comparison with midpoint formula a little bit easier. Right? You see it's x1, x2, so you have your points in order. The upshot of that is, have a look at the ratios. On the top, they're not, and Mr. Dennis made this exact point, they're not in alphabetical order. Do you notice that? And that matters. How have they elected to write it this time? <clears throat> What's different? They have elected to try and make it memorable by making these match. See these? But the upshot of that is, well, if you have this in alphabetical order, Unlike us, you have to swap around. Does that make sense? Now, I will leave it up to you which you prefer. Um, I mean, I have a preference for that one, but that's because that's the one that I learned from ages ago. So that's just where my brain defaults. Um, I do also like the fact that they don't use M, because in coordinate geometry, M means something <laughs> significant all the time, um, namely gradient. So that's why I tend to avoid it. But what I want you to avoid is being confused in the exam, because you have two different formulas in your head that conflict with each other. Okay. Um, if you're going to rely on this thing, then you want to like, predict ahead of time. Okay, am I going to use this form, their form, or the one that I've learned, if that's the one you prefer. Does that make sense?